Hello, my name is Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and in this continuing series of tutorials, I'm going to demonstrate how I process this 360 degree panorama that I've captured with my Ricoh Theta Z1 here inside of Lightroom Classic. I'm going to start with this original rectilinear image you see here, and the results will look like this. I've really enhanced the colors, and I've made it a much more dramatic image. I want to make it look like it's on another planet somewhere in the universe. So I've given it this really dramatic look. Again, I started with this and ended up with this. And I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process of how I did that. Now, of course, this whole story begins with the Ricoh Theta Z1. I want to point out that the images I'm working with in this project were captured in the raw DNG format that you can see right here, and be sure and set this up in your camera before you start shooting. Be sure and also view some of my earlier tutorials that demonstrate the process of installing the special plugin for Lightroom Classic and some of my techniques for capturing your images before you start your project. Okay, let's get going. It all starts, of course, over here in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Here are my original images that I've captured. Here's the standard exposure, a brighter exposure, and again, a darker exposure. I tend to capture all three different exposures, not knowing exactly which one will work, but in this case, this exposure worked great. Now here's the JPEG image you see here, and here's my DNG raw image. Notice that the raw image has these circular views from each camera. It has not been stitched. It is of a higher resolution and has more detail in the shadows and highlights as compared to the JPEG image. So I like to start and use the DNG raw images that I've captured with this new camera. Here in Lightroom, we're going to make our adjustments so that the finished piece looks like this. Let's get right to it. Here's my original that I'm targeting here. My first step will be to go right up here under the basic settings and toggle this down until I can adjust the highlights to the most extreme case, which is a minus 100, and the shadows to a plus 100. These are extreme settings, and I'm doing this because of the drama I want to add to this particular image. I'm just showing you that you have the ability with this DNG raw image to use the full dynamic range of your images. I'm going to bring up my whites just a bit, and then finally go down here to dehaze. This is where I'm going to bring back in some of the detail that I've blown out with those two other adjustments. Here with dehaze, I'm adding this drama that I'm looking for. The sky is becoming rich and the foreground really nicely detailed. This looks great. I might bring up my vibrance a bit. I want that other planet in the universe look. So I'm adding some vibrance. Keep that in mind as you make adjustments to your own images that I'm using these in such a dramatic way to achieve these dramatic results. Next, I'm going to go down to HSL color. I want to show you a tip and technique for targeting exactly where you want to add brightness and saturation. In this case, I'm selecting the orange values right here. By selecting the orange values, I can now go in and increase the saturation, but also the luminance. Watch as I move to the right. It adds this light to the foreground areas. To the left, making it darker. Once again, use this in your set of tools to be able to target specific colors in your image and brighten them up. HSL color, really, really nice. Down here to detail. Because I photographed this at relatively low light and my ISO was about 400, I want to go in and adjust the noise reduction here for both the luminance and color values within my image. You can, of course, zoom in with a Command Plus or Command Minus here on the keyboard inside of Lightroom Classic. We can see some of those adjustments I'm making to my luminance and my color noise adjustments. Fantastic. Next, I'm going to make 
one really important adjustment that I like to make on projects like this, and it's under lens corrections. I like to remove the chromatic aberration by checking this box. Dramatic edges along the edge of these sandstone formations and the sky can sometimes have problems with chromatic aberration. This is a nice way to fix those problems. There you have it. Those are the adjustments I would make here inside of Lightroom Classic to start this project. Because next I'm going to pass this project over to Adobe Photoshop for a few more details that we're going to adjust on these images. Okay. Our next step, of course, is to export the results here from this DNG image to a TIFF image that will open inside of Photoshop. In fact, I'm going to make that a 16-bit TIFF image. Here from my file menu, I'm going over to export. Now previously, in one of my earlier tutorials, I showed you how to install the Rico Theta Stitcher software as a plugin. And I'm going to now use that here. I've set this all up, selecting TIFF and 16-bit here, and now I'm going to export it by selecting export. Be sure and watch that tutorial about how to install the plugin. In this case, I'm going to then export this into a folder on my desktop. And now a new dialog will appear here. This dialog is now giving you a preview of the stitching of the two circular hemispheres that were captured from the Rico Theta Z1. That looks great. I'm now going to select OK. It's going to then, of course, export this stitched 16-bit image over to a new folder. Let's now switch over to Adobe Bridge, and we can take a look at this image right here. So here is my TIFF image that I've exported to this folder. My next step is to use the command or the control key and the letter R while selecting this image to open it once again into the camera raw adjustments. Now I'm working with a 16-bit image exported from my raw image. I still have a lot of control over all of the information and data within this image. I have not thrown too much away. So I can continue to make other little adjustments let's say opening up the shadows a bit more or adding a little bit more dehaze and another punch of vibrance. Wow. So you could add just a little bit more adjustment here. I'm going to select to open object now inside of Photoshop. If I hold down the shift key, I can toggle between the open image and open object. I've chosen to open object so that it maintains the 16 bit information inside the image. Here we are inside of Photoshop for our final adjustment. You can see my smart object over here to the right. And of course, if I double click on that, I can go back in and make additional adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw. But here is one of the most important adjustments that I make to my images. And it's a color balance done with levels. Now you can't find levels inside of Adobe Camera Raw, but I think levels here in Photoshop gives it that extra bump it needs in quality. I'm selecting a non-destructive adjustment layer of levels here from the menu at the base. Here in levels, I'm going to go through and target the red, green, and blue channels. Typically, I move the highlight and shadow sliders until they come over to what I call the edge of the mountain range, as you see here. There are very few pixels until it gets to just this point within the image. I'm going to now go through and do the same process, bringing the adjustments over for the green and the blue in the same process. I don't always move them over to the same point on the edge of the mountain range. I'm going to stop in different locations based upon my screen display do I want it warmer or cooler in the highlights and shadows? And of course, you're controlling the temperature of the highlights and shadows by adjusting these endpoints for the blue, green, and red. I'm going to go back through them and make a few more adjustments 
just like that. I may make one final global adjustment under the RGB values, bring up my highlights a bit, but being careful not to blow them out. Let's try a little bit of midpoint right there. So here's the image before and then after my adjustments. There you have it. I've completed the color correction here inside of Adobe Photoshop as well as Adobe Lightroom Classic. And I, of course, started with a Ricoh Theta Z1 DNG RAW image. In my next tutorial, I'm going to continue this project and demonstrate how to finalize this image for export to the 3D world, where we can view this in a 360 view.